Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's home buyer tip. Today's topic is flood insurance. What is it and do I need it? And along with us to help figure out the answer to this question is Nick Ludwig from Dolliff Insurance. How you doing, Nick? I'm doing good. So, Nick, uh, you're an insurance broker Correct. agent. And what, what is that and what do you do? Our intermediary between the customer and the insurance company, right? We represent a lot of insurance companies. And, uh, and so we find the best match for that particular customer for that particular situation. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So the question today is... Flood insurance, what is it? And you know, I'm in Minnesota. Do I even need it? Yes. Well, you know, more people need flood insurance than think they do. Yeah. And and so uh, flood insurance is insurance for a flood. Right? Exactly. What does that mean, though? Well, and it, it, what it means is is that you got to. So a lot of people don't understand the, the why, in fact, there's a special or particular insurance for flood. And the and the answer is actually pretty pretty easy. It's that that most insurance companies, most standard insurance policies exclude flood right so they exclude that kind of type of loss so and the reason why is because floods are highly uh, unpredictable and they can be very damaging and they usually occur of course for you know for, as common sense would tell you they they happen in places that are close to water right right either lakes or rivers and 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 similar things so insurance companies tend to stay away from those kinds of exposures if they can or if they do it they want to charge some more premium for that exposure right, right. so they want to they want to charge more and so they'll either say look we, we want to write a separate policy for flood or they might say you know what you're right you're right next to the mississippi river and uh and, and you're within a flood zone you're within a hundred year flood zone we don't want to insure you so Traditionally, or at least in the last, and then in the near history, in the last 30, 40, 50 years, I can't remember how long it's been that, since the government has gotten involved in flood mm -hmm. insurance, but there's a federal flood insurance program. And still, most of the flood insurance in the, in, that's sold in the United States is through that federal program. Okay. Although that's changing, and it's changing uh, Why? Recently. Why is that? Because that was my question. Like, I know yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously aware of the National Flood Insurance Plan, Yes. But in a lot of ways, didn't that kind of promote or encourage people to build <laughs> in flood floodplains and stuff? It does, in fact. <laughs> it, it keeps the costs abnormally low, right? Yeah, it's a subsidized program, right? So taxpayers, everybody actually contributes to the cost of, of flood insurance. So if you're not – so, so yeah, it really – there's some not fairness to this, right? So, in other words, you, you live on top of a mountain – and you're like, well, you know, but my taxes are paying for this uh, guy that wants to have a house right on the river, right? And I. But we subsidize the Sherpas who carry the food and oxygen. Uh, not sure. The guy so, uh, and, uh, and the, right, there's examples. There's all sorts of examples of subsidies in the right. in our country, of course. <laughs> and flood insurance is just one of them. Right. But it does get a lot of debate. You know, if you actually cared to read about this or you wanted to do a little Google search, you would see that Congress, every time the flood insurance plan comes up for reauthorization, they argue and complain about it and bitch about it. Because, right, because you have certain states where, yeah, we don't really have much flood exposure, so why are we contributing to this? And then you got other states, like maybe the state of Mississippi or something like right. that, where, you know, we think that flood insurance is very important for our country, right? They're making a lot of good decisions in Mississippi. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious self-interest, right? right. So, so that's what happens. And, 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 yes, but the problem with the federal program is it's really not the greatest insurance and it's kind of expensive, and you don't get a lot of coverage. There's real, there's caps on how much coverage you can get for your property. So if you have a real expensive property, well, you're probably not going to be able to insure the whole thing anyway for flood. And so, so other insurance companies have started to step in. There, there always have, has been other insurance companies that will do some flood insurance. But more are doing it now because what they're realizing is, is that, you know, there are some properties – that have done some things. So they're maybe near a flood zone or in a flood zone, mm -hmm. but they've done some things. They've elevated their property. They've done some things to help minimize loss. Those are the kind of risks that we insurance companies want to, want to do. Right. So they're starting to pick the cream off the, uh, of the, the flood insurance market, and they won't, they won't insure the one that's, that's actually below, uh, <laughs> below sea level, right? right. They won't insure those properties. <laughs> 
We'll let the uh, the American taxpayer. <laughs> That's take. right. Take those. Yeah, They'll insure okay. the ones that that are that are a more of a moderate exposure, right? Okay. So so let me let's let's. So talk. I live yeah. in Minnesota. I yeah. mean, there's a chance I might I, I should carry flood insurance, right? Depending on where I live. So there's there's the land of ten thousand plus lakes. Yeah, there's and as we know, there's m- many more than ten thousand, right? right? But uh, plus we have some nice rivers as well that that do uh, get a little high in the springtime, right? You know the. Not just the Mississippi, but well, how uh, many times does the city of Grand Forks and Fargo need to flood before? No, <laughs> well, right, the Red River, Red is, River right, is uh, is notorious. Yeah, which are North Dakota cities, I understand. That's that, right. But, it's not just yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. It's Moorhead and or it's East Grand Forks, East right? Grand Forks, yep. there you go. And they have a levy, right, and a and a gate and all that good stuff. So so yeah, so people can mitigate and they can they can take action or, or communities can take action. So yeah, let me explain this. So there are maps, right, that engineers put together called flood maps. They cover the entire country. Well, not maybe not right. every part of the country, right? There might be some parts of the Rockies that they don't bother. Probably don't care about uh, doing a flood map for, right? But there, but it covers a lot of the c- country. So you can find out whether you are in a flood zone, which just means that, well, according to the engineers and according to their history as well as their calculations, your property is within or potentially exposed to. Uh, a flood and, and within a hundred year period you might get flooded right and then there's also a 500 year which is less likely but there's that too so you can quickly and and it's easy to do you can do it yourself online or you can ask your agent to just pull it up real quick and find out where your property sits in relation to a flood map and if you're in a flood zone yeah a good you know insurance agent can find that or real estate agent for that matter real estate a lot Should of a lot what's of, going on with and, that. if you've got a loan uh, again if you have a loan uh, a banker now they if there's some federal loans uh subsidies guarantees which many of them are nowadays they actually are now required right. to do those kind of checks as well yeah, i've done those checks so yeah dozen of times right or so, in the last few years. so what's interesting is is that a lot of people don't, they, they get confused on this, and rightly so. They think, well, I'm not in a flood zone. Even if I wanted to buy flood insurance, I can't get it. Not true. You can buy flood insurance even if you're not in a 100-year flood zone or a 500-year flood zone. You can buy flood insurance either from, you can buy it even from the government program. The rates will be cheaper, right, if you're not in the flood zone. And you can buy it many times from other competitive insurance companies. Well, why would you want to do that? The reason that you might consider doing it is that even if you're not in the flood zone, if you're near one, about, I forget the statistics, but it was either 20 or to 30% of all flood claims occur outside the flood zone, outside the 100-year really? flood zone. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And here's why. The first reason is, is obvious. The flood zone maps aren't, 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 aren't gospel. You know, they're not... They're not they're not a hundred percent accurate. Right. Things change. Things change both uh, from just weather patterns change, as well as engineering changes happen. So you can have um, you can have communities do things that help uh, make properties less liable to flood. You also can have things that make it more liable because you can shunt water out of a certain area to try to protect that area, but then the water has to go someplace. It's go somewhere, right. And so it may go someplace where there's more there's more exposure. And in cases where you have really, really extreme weather or really odd weather conditions, what happens many times, and the Army Corps of Engineers does this and other, other government units do that, they have to push the water someplace. So they'll try to send it in one direction or another, but if they have too much water, and they, there's just too much water, your reservoirs can't handle it, your lakes, your ponds can't handle it, your, your, your river bank can't handle it, guess what? The water goes somewhere. Right. It's the and law of unintended consequences. And we saw that in California in the last couple of years. Right. Where, where you, had, you had the hundred, you know, you had the drought followed by the massive amounts of rainfall and I don't know if it's a hundred year flood or whatever they wanted to call it, but where you saw these levees, these reservoirs, you know, breaking. Right. Yes. And, and, so, so things happen, and water, you know, everybody knows this. You watch the YouTube videos or just think about them. And, uh, you know, when the water, you're not stopping the water, right? right. It's going to go somewhere. And uh, it's, if it doesn't go here, if you stop it here, it's going to go somewhere else, or it's going to go up, it's going to raise up, it's going to fill a, a depression. And if you get too much water in a too short of a period of time, well, who knows what can yeah, happen. Yeah, it could be catastrophic. Yeah, consequences. So, so, so f- I always tell people again: think, think about where you are 
and think about those exposures because uh, it, it's, it's not uncommon where somebody is, they're, they're like, you know what, the river's over there and it never really gets up that much. And then you look at history and, and then you're, you're talking to neighbors that have been there for 40, 50 years and they'll tell you, well, you know what, there was one year. 1963, That's boy, right. you know. It That's came right into the house. It's just all of a sudden it was a lake out there. Joe Cap had the Vikings in the NFL championship and the whole place flooded. 1980, was it 87 in the metro area, the west metro area where Golden Valley yeah. was underwater? Yeah, they were building arcs. And yeah. The animals were walking two by two. And, and you know, you, you, and the Golden Valley's got that, that little creek going through there, right? Bassett Creek and everything. Yeah. But all it was was that so, too much water, not enough time, and then they had to shunt the water out of the creek or into a reservoir, and then all of a sudden, if your home is in the wrong place and, or on the wrong street, right. all of a sudden you've got a river yeah. uh, in your front yard. Helicopter evacuations and, yeah, and all that. Yeah, it so. can happen. Now, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So anyway, right. those are some of the interesting things about flood insurance. Well, yeah, insurance. No, it's, it's good. This has been really helpful. I mean, so flood insurance, you know, don't think you don't need it you know, ask. And even if you think that you might need it, maybe you don't, you don't know, right? You have that's to, right. you know, it, it's worth a phone call. It's worth a conversation. So that's right. Speaking of, if someone wants to dig deeper in this topic, how do they get a hold of you, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. My uh, phone number is 952-593-7410. And my email address is nludwig, that's spelled L-U-D-W-I-G, at Dolliff.com, and Dolliff is spelled D-O-L-L-I-F-F. Awesome. So thanks again, Nick. This has been really sure. helpful. I always My learn pleasure. something. I always learn something. So this is Nick Ludwig from Dolliff Insurance. I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. This is today's home buyer tip, uh, flood insurance. So if you want more information or would like to reach us, you can reach us at 612-600-8888, 612 600 88 and always online 24 7 at verde realestate.com. Thank you so much.